In this video, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how to get yourself in on the StarkNet airdrop. I'm going to explain it step by step, every single action you need to take to maximize your chances to make money off of this. And I think if you follow this guy to a T, you've set yourself up for a great success. I also recommend you guys to subscribe to the channel and press the like button on this video as I'll be giving you more and more of these airdrop hunting type of video tutorials. First off, let's give a little bit of an introduction as to what StarkNet really is and why we're so excited about this airdrop. So StarkNet is this new net from Starkware of which the idea is to become a permissionless decentralized validity rollup, often referred to as a ZK rollup, or simply put a scalability improver slash layer two. There are a ton of layer two out there and one of the ones you've probably heard of before is optimism or maybe matic and like i said it just brings a lot of scalability to ethereum also note that it is not guaranteed there will be an airdrop nor is it guaranteed that if you follow all these steps you'll actually be eligible we're just going off of probability here in 2022, there were a couple of crazy airdrops where people made tens of thousands of dollars. And even quite recently with Arbitrum or with Aptos, it was pretty easy to get your hands on some free tokens if you followed similar steps as to what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So again, all I'm going to show you is how to maximize your chances, but still it is not guaranteed. Then again, the expectation is that a token will roll out in 2023 still. So there is a little bit of hurry for you guys to follow this tutorial as soon as possible because the longer you wait, the more of a chance you have to miss out on the opportunity altogether as there's a cutoff date. Also guys, if you'd like to see more airdrop tutorials, just let me know in the comment section down below. That brings us to step number one, and that is to get yourself a MetaMask wallet. All you gotta do is go to metamask.io, press this download for Chrome button, and follow the steps. I'll also leave a link to a MetaMask guide in the description down below, as I've made a video about it, but it's not officially public, but I'll still link it for you guys in the description. And then step 1.5 is to fund it with a little bit of Ethereum, as you're going to need that for the rest of the process. But MetaMask is by far the most popular wallet, and so even if you don't end up following the entire guide, it is always still useful to have a MetaMask and to have at least a little bit of money on there. Step number two is to get yourself an Argent X wallet. How that works is you go to Argent.xyz, press this download for a Chrome button, if you're using Google Chrome, obviously. Again, you have to have MetaMask and this Argent on the same device for step number three. Uh, but if you knew how to set up your MetaMask, you'll know how to set up this Argent X wallet. It's pretty self-explanatory once you press this button. You don't have to put any money on there just quite yet, as I'll explain all of that in step three. Step number three is to head over to starkgate.starknet.io. I'll leave links for this in the description. If I forget, please remind me. And the reason we have to head over here is to take some of our Ethereum and put it onto StarkNet. Right now, StarkNet is not compatible with MetaMask. If it was, that would have been a lot easier, I know. But so you're gonna have to send some Ethereum from the Ethereum mainnet over to the StarkNet net. And you have to do that with some sort of bridge. And the one we're using here is again called StarkGate. All right, so the first thing we want to do on this website is to connect our MetaMask and our Argent X wallet. Again, you're going to need to connect both of these for this to work, and they need to be installed on the same device. And now once you've done that, all you have to do is enter the amount of Ethereum you want to send over. I am personally sending over about 0.025 ETH, but I honestly think you might be fine with just $15. Anyway, once we have put in the amount we want to send over, we press transfer. And you might just want to watch this guy twice, you know, watch me go through these steps. And then after you've watched it once, then follow the steps and actually do it. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean with that. So then I press transfer. It's going to ask me to confirm this in my MetaMask. And then you pay the transaction fee and just wait a little bit for it to be done. Again, there will be a pop-up in your MetaMask asking you to confirm it. It then sends, hey, you might have to wait a little while because it's the alpha version. And that's also an important thing to note. Depending on when you're watching this video, it might be so that only $3 is enough to go through this entire process, or it might take you 25. And that has to do with the gas fee, basically. The more congested it is, the more people that are trying to do this, the more expensive it will get, so to speak. And that will also change the waiting times. I right now, for example, had to wait about three and a half minutes or so for my funds to get to my wallet. But this could actually be extremely fast or take a pretty long time, depending on market conditions. But that was the most important step to get money onto StarkNet. And it was actually the first step of 
being able to be eligible for this airdrop. Our second step is going to be to interact with as many things on StarkNet as possible. And the first thing that comes to mind to me are decentralized exchanges. There are two things you can do on these. You can just swap your Ethereum, for example, to USDC, and then maybe swap it back if you want, or you can provide liquidity and then take it back out. You just want to have as many interactions as possible. It doesn't matter how long you leave your money in there, just interact with it. And again, the more often you do this, or the more days you come back and do this, again, potentially the higher your reward could be, but that again depends. In this tutorial though, I'll just show you how to do it once. And I won't be providing liquidity as I don't think it'll matter too much. I think the most crucial part is to at least have used the decentralized exchanges once. Over on DeFi Llama, we can find that the three biggest decentralized exchanges right now are MySwap, 10K Swap, and Jedi Swap. We're going to use all three. And so just head over to those websites. All right, and for this step, you're gonna wanna connect your wallet over on the top right and make sure it says mainnet right there. Once you've connected your wallet, select a token, for example, Ethereum, and then our end result, in this case here being USDC, we can swap as little as possible over. But again, the annoying part will be that there will be a gas fee. Once you press swap, it'll just ask you to confirm the transaction. I went ahead and did about $10, and I think we're already done. I think the fee was about 50 cents, but give me a second to confirm that. All right, a couple minutes have passed, and indeed it has worked. We have successfully made our first swap on StarkNet. Two more to go. Head over to 10kswap.com, again, connect your wallet, make sure it says mainnet, and just swap something again. It could be as minimal as 0.0001 ETH or something. You're gonna, again, have to pay about a 40 cent, 50 cent fee. Again, I am just swapping about $10 here. And again, after a little while, it will be confirmed, and just, just give it a couple minutes for it to finish. Our second swap is done, and now for our third swap, again, the same process applies. I am, again, swapping over about $10 worth. Once that's done, our next step, I believe step number five, is to try out NFT marketplaces. And so the two ones that I think are best to try out are the two most popular ones, Aspect and Mint Square. All right, and this now is very important. We don't know exactly yet what the requirements for the airdrop will be, but it's surely wise to try out both Mint Square and Aspect and to, again, as step number one, connect your wallet to both of these. And now comes the caveat, be careful that you are using Aspect on the main net. You can see right here, you're using Aspect on testnet. Please switch your wallet network from main net to testnet. If you see this message, you're on the wrong page right now. It means you've accidentally ended up on the testnet. For example, here at testnet.aspect.co, just take away the testnet and you should be fine. And for Min Square, again, go over to the top right, press this little button, then connect wallet. Make sure again, it's on Starknet and not testnet. Also make sure, by the way, that you don't go to any of these fake websites. Never press a sponsored link on Google, guys, come on. Anyway, once you're over on the Min Square website or the other NFT marketplace, just get yourself like a very cheap NFT. Just interact with the marketplace by buying one. Again, <laughs> I don't know, not necessarily what I wanted to buy, but it's cheap, you know? Another side note, a little while ago, it used to be very easy to create your NFTs on Aspect and on Min Square, but for some reason, both of these pages are not being able to be accessed by me anymore. Maybe they took the functionality off right now. Maybe I'm just a degenerate that does not know how to properly go around these websites, but for that reason, I'm not gonna tell you guys to mint your own NFT right now, which by the way, would only cost gas fees, would be pretty cheap. But if you find it over on those websites, a little button to mint or create an NFT, I would. Uh, but I don't think it's a necessity as right now it's just not available. And so all I wanna do right now is just buy one NFT on both of these platforms. Again, anyone will do, I'm just looking for the cheapest one. I'm just buying a random brick here for a couple dollars. I think you'd be fine just buying one that's like, five cents. Remember, you have, we'll have to pay a little gas fee, which again is going to be like 50 cents or so. And then our last step is going to be to connect to some sort of digital ID. A couple of the ones I've found are, I guess, Sandclock, Starknet Social, and Starknet ID. I've headed over to Starknet ID and I have connected my wallet. So now I'm gonna to have to pick a username to build an ID. On this website, there are two different things you can do. You can buy a domain and get yourself an identity. You can see over at the top that you have two different buttons right there. Just press identities first. It will then again ask you to sign the transaction. All right, that one is now minted. Again, it took a couple minutes. I'm not gonna lie, this website is quite shitty for some reason. It takes me sometimes multiple different reconnects to actually get back to this identity. Just gonna make that obvious here. But once you've got it, it's been recommended to me to make sure you connect all your socials to it, especially the GitHub, because that again might increase your chances of being eligible for this airdrop. 
just go ahead and verify all these. You have to pay a transaction fee every single time, but hey, it is what it is. And again, a lot of this were just basing on previous airdrops and exactly what you had to do to be eligible for them. Again, usually there are multiple tiers, meaning if you do something once, for example, you get less of a reward than if you do something 10 times. And the same thing applies to the amount of money that you transact and for how long you've been doing this. And that's why it's so important to start as early as possible. Again, then something you could do is also get yourself a domain, like for example here, dustybc.stark, whatever. Relatively expensive at 0.009 ETH, and I don't think it's mandatory. And then as a bonus, one thing you might want to do is we use Stargate to bridge tokens from Ethereum to StarkNet. We could also use something like orbiter.finance to swap our tokens back out. The idea here being you don't know exactly which bridge is going to tick off that box. And so it's better to use as many as possible. From an opposite side, I do believe it will be Stargate. And so this is just a additional step to potentially get some extra money. I've heard some people say it's also smart to potentially interact with ZK Lend. They basically got themselves an entire D, uh, DeFi market built on Starknet. The only negative side is right now it's only Testnet. If you were to want to switch to testnet right there, there's a little button to switch from mainnet to testnet in your Argent X wallet. I'd recommend to then also join the ZK Lens server. Again, this is just optional, optional, but I'm sharing it anyway to find some different faucets for testnet as this is basically free money. It's not real money, right? But it's free, if you know what I mean, because it's the testnet. It's not the real thing. So there's no swapping over to here, no bridging needed. Just get yourself some free tokens on the testnet. So it's fake money, understand that. But honestly, it might just be very annoying to get yourself these testnet tokens as you often will get this error. So yeah, but it's just an optional for the people that know how to do it. I might, however, create another entire guide because there's also a lot of rumors about a ZK Lend related airdrop. I'll just be covering more airdrops on the channel. I'll try to do a tutorial for the most important ones where you can also get the most amount of money. And so stay tuned for those. And guys, make sure you press the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more of these.